Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jade and today we're going to be going through a beginner yoga flow. I'll be teaching you the fundamentals of some very basic movements and the transitions from one movement to the next. So uh, make sure that you have a sturdy yoga mat and have fun with this. Listen to your body. If you need to slow down or modify anywhere, go ahead and do so. Okay, take your own pace. Remember, everybody's body is different, so listen to yours. It's unique to you. So grab your mat and I'll meet you there. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and begin at the top of our mat here. So we're gonna bring our feet hip distance apart and just gaze down and notice maybe your feet are turning outward, maybe they're turning inward. That's okay, just notice where your feet are right now. See if you can move that second toe, which is next to the big toe, a little bit more forward here to point towards the front of the mat. If you notice that's a little difficult for you, that's okay, just work on trying to get to that point, okay? So just Notice where your body is right now, all right? What we wanna do is lift the toes up and press evenly into the front and the back of the foot. So we have four points in the feet. We have the ball of the foot, the inside and the outside, and then the heel, the inside and the outside, okay? So press evenly, both feet, all four points, all right? And what we're gonna do is press down into the earth and think of lifting up through the legs here. So firming the front of the quad, think of lifting it up towards the upper body. Breathe in and lift all the way through the crown of the head, which is the back of the head here, the top of the head. So lifting up, keeping your neck in line with your spine here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna breathe in and then exhale, begin to pull the tailbone down towards the heels here. We're gonna spin the inner thighs back a little bit if you notice your knees start to open up. So just gaze down and look. Again, lifting the thighs up. We're gonna think of firming the outer hips in towards the midline here. So really activating the trunk here. Breathe in and breathe out. Soften the ribs in towards the body and begin to activate the core. So pulling your navel up and in towards your spine. Think of pulling your spine back. So what we're doing by pulling the tailbone down is we're trying to create length within the spine here, okay? And we're trying to keep the pelvis even by making sure our knees are pointed forward, all right? So again, breathe in, notice how the shoulders lift, and then breathe out. Let the shoulders fall away from the ears, creating space within the neck. And again, make sure those ribs are pulling into the body. So when we inhale, we notice we open the heart, we arch the back. We wanna keep the back neutral. So remain with the ribs pulling in towards the body. And just think of the inhales drawing through the nose all the way down through each vertebra, creating space, lifting each one up closer towards the sky. All the way down through the legs, through the arms. Just open the palms towards the front of the mat here. Think of spreading the sternum. Again, inhale through the body and exhale. Maybe you begin to use your ujjayi breath, which is that ocean sound we create when we restrict the back of the throat just a little bit. So breathing in through the nose, and then breathing out through the nose. Just a subtle little hum. Inhale, and then drawing your attention to your face here. Do you notice yourself holding any tension within all the muscles in the face? Just checking through each one. When we go through movements that seem unnatural or tougher on the body, something we're conscious of and we have to really uh, try to do, You'll notice that your face stiffens up, whether it's the eyebrows, the forehead, you'll frown, the cheeks, the mouth, something is clenching, the jaw, sometimes we grind our teeth, and just notice this, and see if you can give yourself permission to just settle and soften there as well, while remaining in your posture, which can be very difficult. It's a challenge as is. And then 
Inhale, let's open the palms up just a little bit wider, so stretching the fingers. And then exhale, confirming the navel up and in. So we want to keep the core active, even in the standing pose. There's so many little things that we need to focus on to make sure that it's proper, that our body is in alignment, and that we remain with that breath moving through the body. Our next inhale, what we're gonna do is pull the shoulders back, but make sure that the back does not arch. So we wanna keep the ribs again, softening into the body to pull the tailbone down, press into the feet, just opening the shoulders back and noticing how far your body will allow for this. So maybe you're a little tighter in the shoulders, which a lot of us are. If you do a lot of um, typing or sitting, lots of writing, or if you're driving a lot, this is very, very common for you to be very arched and rolled forward here. So just notice where your body is. Again, paying attention to keep the back of the spine neutral here, so no arching in the back. Keeping the core pulling in towards the spine. Shoulders down. See if you can open up a little bit further. On your next exhale. And let's begin to open the arms out to the sides here. So again, we're pulling back, energizing through the fingertips, just feeling the energy building through the arms here. Noticing that grounding sensation with the feet here, still gripping into the floor. <sighs> Exhale, softening the ribs into the body, really creating that core contraction, that stabilization. And then we're gonna inhale, reach the arms up towards the sky. Draw your palms together at the top here and then bring your hands just to your heart. So your thumbs are gonna to touch your heart, elbows are pointing out. So we're energizing, pressing into the palms here. Again, still keeping that alignment within the body. Noticing that as we press into the palms, we're able to really engage the core a little bit deeper here. So just pulling that belly button up and in. Side hips are pulling in, just firing up our core here. Again, we're gonna open the palms out to the side, back, keeping the back neutral. Open the arms up towards the sky, bring the palms together, and then pull your palms through your heart. We're gonna to begin to hinge from the hips forward here. So we're pulling the hips back. Maybe you begin to bend the knees if you feel a little tighter in the hamstrings here. Again, we wanna keep that alignment in the upper body, so make sure you're not hunching or arching, okay? Palms are right at the heart. We're gonna stop here. Breathe and elongate through the spine. And then begin to exhale to fold all the way down. So bend the knees if needed to keep that alignment in the upper body. What you wanna do is make sure that your torso and your chest, depending on your body's proportions, are resting towards the top of your thighs. Release your hands to the floor and let your head just hang. Draw the breath in, allowing the sternum to fall towards the floor in our forward fold or Uttanasana pose. And then let's inhale, lift up halfway again. So bring the hands onto the shins and just roll the shoulders back. Again, keep the core lifting up into the spine, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fold all the way down. Let's press the palms to the side of the feet. We're gonna press them into the floor. Middle finger is pointed forward and we're gonna step back with our left foot. So, right now we're in our lunge, our runner's lunge. We can come up to our fingertips. What we want is that back toe to be under the back heel. We want our hands underneath our shoulders. We want the front knee to be over top of that front heel. And again, if you can get that big toe, that second big toe pointed forward. Inhale, energize that back leg away from the floor and then pull that right hip back. Breathe, pull the heart forward and then exhale, release the hands all the way down to the floor. We're gonna press into the mat and then slide that right foot straight back. So we're in our plank pose. So inhale here, release the knees down. We're gonna uncurl the toes and then sink all the way back, roll our body up. So we're in our Vajrasana pose. Inhale, and if this is a little bit too intense for your knees, stretching the knees out, um, go ahead and grab a block or a blanket or something and you can place it between the legs here or you can put a little pillow up here on your uh, heels. Let's inhale, reach the arms back again. And exhale, soften the ribs into the body. 
So here we are, same upper body alignment. We're giving the legs a break here. Inhale, and then exhale. Let's reach the arms up towards the sky on your inhale, reaching through the side body, pulling the navel up and in. Notice if your arms are coming forward a little bit. If you try to reach straight up towards the sky, do you notice your ribs really pushing out? Can you zip your ribs into your body and firm your core to keep that alignment nice and neutral in the back? Or are you having a hard time and notice your arms coming forward? What that is, is that's just a little limited mobility in the shoulders, okay? So what we're gonna do is just stay here, work with your body, keep the alignment in your spine that's most important. Just notice where your arms are and then fly the arms out to the side here and see if you can reach the hands behind your back and clasp them. Now, if that's a little too intense for you today, what you can do is reach the arms back and then bend at one elbow, reach for the opposite elbow, clasp it, and then the other side as well. Okay, so I'm just crossing the arms in the back, reaching from elbow to elbow, okay? So either way, wherever you are, you want to draw the arms down towards the floor. If you're clasping, draw the fist down towards the floor, opening the shoulders, spreading the collarbone here. Again, the ribs softening into the body. Pull the shoulders down away from the ears, lengthen up through the crown of the head here. The legs be soft, noticing the shins pressing into the earth. Breathe in and breathe out. One more breath in. Can you open the arms up a little bit further away from the body? So see if you can pull your fist away from your glutes, maybe. And if you have your arms in a clasp here, just see if you can lift them a little bit. It's harder when they're in the elbow clasp, but see what you can do here. We're just trying to open the shoulders up a little bit. Draw the breath in through the body. Notice the breath moving through you. And pay attention to what areas feel limited in these poses. So maybe you notice tension in the shoulders. See if you can draw your breath, draw that energy to that area to create space. And then on your exhale, remove that negative energy, that blockage, and see if you can go a little bit deeper into that pose. Your next inhale, let's release and bring the arms right back up. And then let's bring the arms just in front of us. We're gonna plant the palms into the floor here. Roll forward here. So palms are underneath the shoulders. Knees are gonna be right underneath the hips. We're gonna spin the triceps back here. And then what we're gonna do is pull the shoulders down. Same thing, lift the core up and in towards the spine. Keep the side hips pulling in here. Breathe in and then find space in the arms here. So lift up, press into the floor and lift up through the arms. Keep the neck in line with your spine. So no letting your neck drop here. And no, I see a lot of this, cranking it forward to look forward. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on your cervical spine. Extend that right leg just straight back behind us. So notice how my heel is right in line with my glutes. And then I'm not lifting the hip up. What I'm doing is I'm spinning the hip so it's level to the hip that's down supporting me, okay? So just energize back through the heel. Go ahead and flex the foot so the toys, toes are pointed down towards the mat. <laughs> toys, I have toys everywhere for my babies. I have toys on my mind all the time. Okay, so flex the foot and then think of spinning the inner thigh up towards the sky so the knee is angled down towards the mat. Really energize through the heel and then notice if that left hip, the supporting hip, is pushing out to the side. Try to keep it pulling in towards the midline. Same thing with the lifted one, but since we're supporting on this hip over here, and then pressing into the right palm, we're gonna begin to walk the left fingers in front of us. And then maybe, if you're there today, you can reach forward as well with that left arm. So spreading the fingertips, breathing here, noticing the spine, noticing if you're trying to arch here. And again, if it's hard for you to bring your arm in line with your ears, just reach as far as you can. And then go ahead and release the hand down if it's lifted. And then we're gonna bring that right knee down to the floor. Let's go ahead and lean the hips all the way back and then we're gonna reach the arms forward. Child's pose. One breath into the back of the heart and then exhale, we're all the way up. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So let's go ahead and extend that left leg straight behind us. So again, pull the hip down so it's level to the right line. Press into the mat with the palms. 
evenly into the palms here. Breathe. Just feeling your body here. And then maybe you can walk that right hand up right in front of you. Again, breathe, keeping the core nice and strong. Maybe you can begin to lift that right arm up. So in this balancing pose, if your arm is lifted as well, we want to really use our core to stabilize us. And then those supporting limbs, we want to make sure we're not just pushing down on them. So even though they're supporting us and they're grounded, we want to find space there. So think of lifting through those supporting limbs. And go ahead and release the right hand and release the left knee. This time we're gonna walk the hands forward one little step each and then we're gonna roll down the hips to the floor, roll all the way down to the chest, elbows are pointing back and then release the chest to the floor here. You can bring your forehead to the floor. So elbows are pointed back, hands are right at the chest, middle fingers pointed forward here. Breathe in, breathe out. Think of firming the tailbone down towards the back of the heels. Notice it's the same alignment, even though we're going from one angle to the next. It's the same checklist. And then we're gonna press into the palms, inhale to peel the heart up off the floor and forward. Tailbone's pulling down as we're pulling the heart forward here. Just gazing ahead and then exhale, roll all the way down. <sighs> One more time, lift up. Bhujangasana. And then release all the way down. This time what you can do is press into the palms, press into the knees, and we're just gonna lift all the way back to our tabletop pose. So go ahead and bring your hands back underneath the shoulders. And we're gonna curl the toes under this time and then begin to lift the hips like someone's lifting our hips up towards the sky as we press into the hands to push the upper body away from the hands. So noticing the sternum falling towards the floor. Keep the knees bent, heels are in line with the toes. Hips are really lifting. Same thing with the upper body. Neutral spine, so if you're rounding in the lower spine, bend the knees even more and think of really lifting the hip creases up towards the sky and back. Spin the triceps down towards the floor here and then pull the shoulders out away from the ears and then up away from the ears. So up now towards the sky. And our inversion in Adho Mukha, our downward facing dog. Breathe. And we're gonna sink the hips back, look forward and step forward with the left leg. So what we wanna do is bring the knee in towards the chest as we shift forward and then step the foot to the inside of the left hand. If that's difficult for you, what you can do is walk the feet in a little bit before you do this, sink the hips down. That's gonna lift your hips up a little higher to create more space. And then you can shift forward, okay? And then slide the toes back. So a few options there. So inhale and then we're gonna exhale to step the right foot forward into our forward fold, Uttanasana. Let's press into the mat and then very slowly inhale as we roll all the way up. Arms are gonna reach out to the side back and then up towards the sky. Draw your hands to heart center. Okay, so let's reach the arms down and up again. Draw your hands through heart center as you fold forward all the way down. Uttanasana, lift up halfway if you need to bring your hands to your shins, go for it. And then exhale, fold forward, press the hands into the mat. And then we're gonna step back with the right foot this time. So same thing, come to the fingertips, make sure that right leg is energizing away from the floor. Front knee is right over the heel. Shoulders are pulling down and back, sink the hips down. Breathe here and then press into the hands and press that left foot straight back. Lower the knees down. This time we're gonna uncurl the toes and then just roll all the way forward. So we're gonna press into the mat and see if you can lift your heart up just a little bit further now. Maybe you can begin to straighten the arms coming for our seal pose. So seal, we have the thighs still on the floor. If the elbows are pointed back, that's fine too. That's just a high bujangasana. 
So wherever your body wants to take you today, pull the shoulders back, make sure you're opening the heart forward, pulling the tailbone down so we're not crunching the lower back. And then we're gonna go ahead and lift the hips up into our tabletop, curl the toes, and press the hips right back into a downward facing dog. Breathe here, and exhale. Very good. Let's bend at the knees, and this time we're gonna step forward again with the right foot this time. So make sure you have space to step forward, and then press into the hands, press into that front foot and step forward with the left foot forward fold inhale arms are going to fly all the way out to the side and then straight up to the sky draw your hands through heart center again open the arms up to the sky and then dive it down all the way down to forward fold inhale halfway lift and then exhale what we're going to do is plant the fingers to the floor the palms to the floor and then we're gonna step back with our right leg right now, okay? So staying here in our runner's lunge. Again, same alignment, energize that back leg. Front knee is right over top of that front heel. Breathe in and then release that back knee, uncurl the toes. Let's press into the right palm here. What we're gonna do is just open the elbow up towards the sky, begin to twist from the torso and just reach that left hand up towards the sky. If the reaching is a little bit too much for you, you can just keep the arm right here on that left leg. Again, pulling that left hip in towards you. Keep reaching. And then release that arm down to the floor. We're gonna press into the front heel. Lift all the way up, reach the arms forward and up towards the sky. Draw the hands behind you. Maybe you clasp the hands, maybe you clasp the elbows. We're gonna lift the heart up, keeping the back neutral, so no arching in the back. So you can sink the hips a little bit lower here. Pull that left hip back, right hips coming forward. So we're trying to keep the hip bones level to the front of the mat here. And then release the hands. Let's reach the arms up towards the sky. And then down to the mat, what we're gonna do is just press the fingertips below the shoulders here, so we're hinging from that front left hip. And we're gonna begin to pull the hips back here. Okay, so if you need to keep the knee bent and you really tighten the hamstring, that's fine too. See if you can begin to peel the toes up off the mat, up towards the sky. Okay, what we wanna do is make sure we're not rounding the back. So bend the knee to make sure, same thing like forward fold, make sure that the, the left side of the torso is pressing on top of that left knee here, okay? Or if you're all the way back, just make sure that that back is nice and neutral. So just breathe. I tend to be tighter for some reason in my hamstring more than ever after my little guy. And it's been over a year now and I still can't get these hamstrings to open up, but it's okay. I'm still just trying to work through it. And then let's very carefully begin to bend into the front knee, walk the hands forward. We're gonna curl that back foot, lift the knee off the floor, press into the palms. This time what we're gonna do is press into the front foot and then step that right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale all the way up, reach the arms up towards the sky, draw the hands through heart center, and then we're gonna come all the way back down this time. Lift halfway up, Arda, and then all the way down. This time we're gonna step the left foot straight back. Okay, so same thing. Check your alignment. And then when you're ready, release the left knee to the floor and curl the toes. Press into the left hand. And then we're going to begin to twist from the torso. See, see if you can use your abs to twist you towards the right. Just use a little bit of your arm to help the momentum. And then reach the elbow up towards the sky. And maybe you can extend it all the way up. Maybe that's too intense with just the elbow, so go ahead and release the hand onto the top of the right thigh. Listen to your body. And what I want you to do here is think about firming that left glute to keep that left psoas open. And then keep pulling that right hip in towards the center line here. Find space to, between the arms here if you're reaching. And then just reach up through that left arm if you have the other arm down. And then when you're ready, bring that right arm down to the floor. 
And then what we're gonna do is we're going to press to lift the arms, reaching in front of us, coming all the way up. And then fly the arms out to the side again. We're gonna clasp the hands in whichever variation works for you. Keeping the neutral spine, keeping the shoulders down away from the ears, finding space, finding strength, finding stability here. Keep the breath moving through you. And then when you're ready, let's reach the arms back up. And then bring your arms just underneath the shoulders here. We're gonna extend that right knee as far as you can go. Peel the toes up off the floor. Again, if you need to keep a bend in the knee to keep your back neutral, do so. Listen to your body. Most importantly is the alignment, not the range of motion. So listen to the alignment and see where your body can go. And then once your body builds that trust and knows it's safe, it will open up so you can go a little bit further into the stretch. How does your body build trust? That's a good question. Well, I will say with the breath, when we tend to get stressed out, we tend to breathe heavy or we stop breathing altogether, we hold our breath. So if you keep that breath moving through you, not only are you allowing for that space to open, but what's happening is you're building that trust. So your body trusts your mind, your mind trusts your body. And then what it does is it relaxes and it's able to go a little bit deeper and settle. So that's what's happening. When you're ready, go ahead and bend into the front knee, walk the hands up. We're gonna curl the back toes, lift that knee up. So we're in a runner lunge. Press into the palms and step that right foot straight back. Lower the knees, roll forward, all the way down to the mat. Inhale, lift up into your seal pose if you can, or your high bhujangasana, cobra pose. Or if you'd like, you can come for a full upward facing dog, urdhva mukha. So press the palms into the floor evenly, lift up through the arms, shoulders come back, tailbone pulls down, squeeze the legs together, breathe, make sure the heels are not falling out to the side, so they're up, pointed up towards the sky, and then we're gonna roll over the toes, lift the hips, see if you can come for a full transition into your downward facing dog. If not, you can drop the knees and lift the hips up that way. So listening to your body, using the variation that works for you again in each transition, each pose. Don't force yourself to do something your body tells you it's not ready for. So if you feel any pains or you don't feel a lot of trust moving in there, in that position or through the transition to get to that position, then use a modification just to build the trust. Eventually in time you can go further. It's not about the goal necessarily, it's about the pathway to get there. All right, let's bend the knees and this time we're gonna do a step forward with the right foot. Stay here in our runner's lunge again. And what we're gonna do is pull the right hip back, extending that right knee and then walk the hands so they're just underneath the shoulders again. So come to the fingertips. If you're using blocks, you can place blocks under your hands here. Bring the hands closer to that right leg. Press into that big front toe, okay? And then keep that right knee engaged, so don't let it lock out, okay? So keep a little bit of that engagement in the knee, the hamstring activated. What we're gonna do is pull that right hip back, lift that back heel, up off the floor, so coming into the tippy toes, it's gonna to give you a little more space to pull the right hip back. Energize through that back leg. So this is a pyramid variation here with the back heel up. And let's inhale, pull the knee forward, so bending into the knee. Exhale, again, pull the right hip back, extending the front knee. So a little bit of movement. Inhale to bring the knee forward, exhale extend and then inhale exhale extend it nice and slow move with your breath inhale to bring it forward last time we're going to extend and hold one more breath and let's bend the knee and this time we're going to press into the front heel lift the arms straight up towards the sky again pull the right hip back Energize through that back leg, so see if you can really extend that knee away from the mat here. 
Reach the arms up, fly them out to the side. Again, see if you can clasp the arms behind you. Here in a crescent pose, or Anjaniyasana pose. So knee is just over the heel, toes pointed forward if you can. We wanna keep the knee in line with the toes. So wherever your toes are, if they're out a little bit, make sure the knee is following. And then release the hands, reach them up, and fly them down to the mat. We're gonna press that right foot straight back and then press right back into our downward facing dog. Let's do the same thing on the opposite side. Bring the knee in, step that left foot forward in our runner's lunge. Pull that left hip back, breathe it out here, and then go ahead and begin to extend that left knee. Press into the big toe, same thing. Pull that left hip back, right hip forward, and energize that back leg away from the floor. Heel lifted, and breathe. Spine is neutral. Bring the hands in to support you. Inhale to bend into the knee. Little movement here. Exhale, extend. Inhale, runner's lunge, and let it go. Inhale, and then exhale. Last time, inhale to bend, and then exhale, pull that hip back. Breathe here for a moment. And then let's bend into the front knee, press into that front foot, reach the arms up towards the sky, coming into our Anjani Asana on the opposite side here. And then we're gonna fly the arms out to the side and again, clasp them behind us. Energize that back leg away from the floor. And release the arms, reach them up and release them to the mat. Press that left foot straight back and then press right back into your downward facing dog. Let's bend at the knees. We're gonna step forward, right followed by left into our forward fold. Press into the mat, reach the arms around and up. Uttita Hastasana, draw your hands to heart center into Samasthiti. All right, you guys, take a breath here. Just recenter, collect your thoughts, allow for them just to settle right now okay so try not to judge yourself for any of these movements if it feels frustrating or it feels like the alignments you know imbalanced or anything that's normal it's perfectly normal you should be proud of yourself for just noticing where you're at all right now let's just draw the attention back to the breath breathe in breathe out okay so let's go ahead and press into the right foot make sure your foundation in your foot is complete completely strong so pressing evenly into all four corners again we're going to bend that right knee and just lift up to the toes okay the left hip back make sure it doesn't twist in your torso or anything like that we want to keep everything level to the front square to the front here press into the hands energizing activating the core see if you can lift the knee a little bit further so maybe just keeping the toe is going to work for you today maybe you can go a little bit further Stay stable on that bottom leg. Remember to lift through the leg. Find space. Find that feeling of grounding, stability. Remember to pull in towards your midline. So draw your outer body in towards the center here. Front and back comes in towards the center. And then what we're gonna do is step back with that left leg, coming back into our crescent pose, okay? So breathe it out here. Press into the hand still. And we're gonna extend that front knee to straighten that front leg. Again, pressing into the toe, lifting up through the leg. Pull that left hip forward, right hip back. Inhale, lift through the legs. Make sure that you're dropping the shoulders down, softening the ribs in. Keep pressing into the hands here. And then very slowly and softly, we're gonna just very carefully bend into the front knee and begin to press into the front foot to slide the back foot forward as we straighten the front leg, lifting the back leg up towards the sky here in line with the glute. So pressing into the hands. If you need to bend the front knee just a little bit, go ahead and do so. Same alignment, ribs are pulling in, core is nice and strong. Lift up through that right leg 
find that stability in the foot here. If you're wobbly, go ahead and bring the foot down and just try again. Lifting the quad up, so finding the length throughout the leg. Keep pressing into the hands here. And what we're gonna do is reach the arms out to the side, making a T, and then maybe you reach behind your back and come in for your elbow clasp or your full clasp. Keep energizing through that back leg and go ahead and flex the foot down towards the floor. Virapadrasana, three, you guys, good job. This is tough. And then when you're ready, go ahead and release the hands back to prayer and then step straight back into your crescent pose. So bend the front knee. Reach the arms up towards the sky. Bring the hands to the floor and then we're gonna press to step back with that right foot. Let's give our legs a break here. Lower the knees down, sink the hips back. Inhale here in Balasana and then roll right back up to our downward facing dog. Let's bend at the knees, look forward, and then we're gonna step forward with the left leg, followed by the right. Forward fold, inhale all the way up. Arms are gonna come out to the side, straight up to the sky, and then draw your hands to heart center. Pressing into the hands, really energizing through the palms. We're gonna shift the weight now to the left leg, so make sure that you're grounding evenly through all four points of the toe. Go ahead and bend that right knee, make sure the hips don't move. Firm that left glute in, pull the tailbone down, and maybe you can lift the knee up a little bit higher. Maybe you're keeping it on the floor and that's perfectly fine. And listening to your body, just working with wherever your body is today. And even if you're able to do this, maybe today, for whatever reason, your body is just not, not going for it. So yoga is not about how far you can go, it's about listening to your body. Okay. And then let's go ahead and step straight back into our crescent pose again. So find that alignment. You're gonna pull that left hip back, press into the palms, activate the core up, pull the tailbone down. And then we're gonna go ahead and straighten that front knee. So extending in the front knee, press into the big toe. Make sure you're grounded in that front foot. Breathe here. And then very softly bend into the knee and begin to slide that back foot forward as we maybe straighten the front leg. We're gonna lift that back leg up towards the sky here in line with the glute. Make sure that right hip is pulling down, the inner thigh is lifting up, pressing into the palms. Maybe you bend that front knee, keep the back nice and neutral, You're using your core, let the ribs be soft into the body. You're looking down, neck is stretched. Inhale, reach the arms out to the side, and then again, coming in for your clasp, or maybe you just keep the palms at your heart, that's fine too. And then go ahead and flex the foot. So the toes are pointed down. Reach through that back heel and stay very stable on that bottom leg. Right now, we are being stabilized and supported completely by that bottom leg. So just remember, you have what it takes to stay stable. Think about the four points. Think about pulling your body in towards the center line. One more breath. And then release the arms and back to prayer. Let's go ahead and sink back into our crescent pose. Reach the arms up and then fly the arms to the mat and press to step back. And all the way forward, we're gonna lower the knees and sink back into our balasana pose. Very good, you guys. Release the forehead to the floor. Let the elbows be soft. And when you're ready, go ahead and slide the arms as you bring the body up, coming back to our Vajrasana pose for a moment. Just breathe, the arms just maybe fall into the thighs. Maybe close the eyes. Again, drawing that attention to your face. Are you holding any tension within any of the muscles? of your face, there's a lot. So just noticing maybe where you're holding stress. The shoulders just fall. All right, you guys, and then when you're ready, let's go ahead and swoop the legs out. And we're just gonna roll all the way down to the mat here. So releasing the upper body to the floor, 
breathe and tuck the shoulders underneath, down away from the ears, find space in the neck, pull the tailbone down, same thing. Breathe. Go ahead and reach the arms out side to side, palms facing up. And then we're just gonna let the knees fall towards the left side here. You may notice a crack in the spine. That's normal, it's just releasing tension, creating space. Take a few deep cleansing breaths here, just to relax. Not using just one leg, not using any strength. Give yourself permission to just be, to just surrender. You're completely supported, so you can just let go right now. When you're ready, let's bring the knees up very carefully and let's switch sides. So bring the knees now over to the right side. You can turn your gaze inward here and just notice. Notice the sensations within you. See if you can see the light moving through you right now. Maybe your breath is moving through you. See it moving through your body, down past your heart, through your limbs out through your fingers, out through your toes. And then when you're ready, let's bring the knees back up. And let's come for our final pose. We're gonna open the knees just out to the side, bring the bottoms of the feet together if you can. If that's too much, you can bring the feet further down or you can come for fallen bridge. So bring the knees up and let the knees fall in. Feet are gonna open wide on the mat, so whatever works for you. Let's go ahead and bring your hands to your heart. Resting your palms on your heart. Just breathe for a few moments in this complete stillness. Gifting yourself this time to settle, to just be still, which is really hard to find these days. <laughs> so enjoy this moment. Enjoy this moment of stillness, gifting yourself the opportunity to just be right now. Draw your attention just to your mat. Letting go of anything else right now. Take one deep breath in and let it go. Let your heart soften. And when you're ready, let's bring the knees back up and then we're gonna make our way back up to a seated position. So if you'd like, you can roll to one side and then go ahead and press into the top palm and make your way up to a seated. And let's just cross the legs. So into a Sukhasana, you can have one in front of the other. You can have one on top of the other. Just close the eyes for a moment. Draw the breath in. Let's reach the arms up towards the sky. And then draw your hands down to your heart one last time. Let's drop the chin. Just honor your body today through taking you through this flow on yourself for allowing yourself time to settle and to improve your body, draw awareness to your movement, draw awareness to your physique, your mind. One last breath in and then exhale till we meet again, namaste.